This is Stephen Janis reporting for the Real News Network in Baltimore City, Maryland. Controversy today over a recent mayoral primary. Advocates gathered to call attention where they say were an array of errors. Felons being discouraged from voting, a lack of provisional ballots, and some irregularities in the voting process itself. Now, the election board says these allegations are unfounded and they will certify it Friday. But these advocates are calling for the governor to investigate and state prosecutors to look into all their claims. Um, what are the basic allegations and concerns about the election? Well, it's gross negligence. I and mean, we've seen numerous accounts of voter irregularities all across the city. And based off that, the cumulative effect of the totality of all these actions, we believe, leads to voter suppression. It's the reason why we're calling on Governor Hogan to have the state prosecutor or to appoint an independent investigator to investigate the claims that are being made. Now, we, when we covered one of the polling stations, they ran out of provisional ballots. Correct. Is that something you saw in other locations? It was. So, yeah. uh, as well as pens that, that weren't there, so people were using pencil, marker, whatever they could find. Um, you had election judges who were allowing campaign workers to come in and work the scanner machines and help them out, even though they weren't hired or trained or certified by the Board of Elections. Uh, Janice Dixon, the sister of mayoral candidate Sheila Dixon, somebody fraudulently voted in her name during early voting. She was given a provisional ballot on election day. Um, you have fifth district candidates given six district ballots and vice versa. Uh, so we have a list of already 27 different versions of different irregularities that happened, which is why we're calling on a town hall Thursday night at Sharon Baptist Church at 7 o'clock, because we know if it's only this amount already in three days, that we can imagine the widespread irregularities that happen throughout the city. Where do you see this headed? Um, is this going to be like a new election scenario, or what exactly uh, we, are you looking for to happen you know, specifically? That you like to see? What we're hoping to do is to get a formal investigation into the matter. We know the people's voting rights were violated by this particular situation. Uh, the voter registration form that was distributed throughout the course of the election did not make mention of the fact that ex-offenders, ex-felons in particular, now have the right to vote. The form specifically said that ex-felons can't vote. What did, for me, from a legal perspective, are the most egregious pieces of evidence that this election uh, was mishandled? Well, I think the, the ballot situation where people were given the wrong ballots for their particular polling places was particularly egregious. Mm -hmm. I think losing the eight flash drives that contained the ballots from eight precincts, that was egregious. Um, bringing in uh, random people from the from campaigns to work as election judges. And, and it, it, the list just goes on and on. I mean, every time I turn around, I'm hearing something different. And it's just, it's just unacceptable in, in terms of what we should be able to expect from our city board of elections. So just to clarify, the flash drives were lost. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. The flash drives were lost and then recovered. Right. And so your concern is that during that period of time, they could have been tampered well, with? Well, well, yes. I mean, they could be tampered with. I mean, have they even been inspected? to determine whether or not they were tampering with. And I know that might sound absurd to some people, but the, it's the cavalier attitude of the City Board of Election that, that gives us pause, and, and that these things really shouldn't happen. How, how do you lose eight precincts in the city of Baltimore? So we're hopeful that they haven't been tampered with, but have, make, we want to make sure that they're counted, and uh, we want to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And that's really what this is all about, preserving the right to vote and ensuring that these types of irregular, irregularities do not reoccur. Now, there was a letter sent out to ex-felons saying they couldn't vote. Do we know where that letter came from yet, or what? This, according to Christopher Urban, who's been pushing that letter uh, because he had received it, he indicated he received it from the City Board of Election. And that being the case, if that affected uh, people's decision to vote or not vote to save themselves from humiliation and embarrassment, uh, that's a problem. So um, that's an issue that needs to be looked into. And hopefully our town hall meeting will unearth all of these issues that we find uh, concerning and provide us with uh, at least the facts to present them in a more cognizable manner. Let me ask you um, one last question. You know, there's only a few places this can head, which would be a new election. Is that where you think this has to go? Well, um, if this is how we feel, you know, given the totality of the irregularities, it's, it's very difficult to rely upon the results of this election. And uh, that is an extreme remedy to, to sort of like toss the entire election and, and redo it. But if that is a way, is that, if that's what we need to do to ensure the right to vote, then it should not be taken off the table. You know, in terms of the cards that were left and not then found later, 
concerns that they've been tampered with? Do you think that's a legitimate concern? No, I don't. Uh, the election process uh, over the years, uh, we used 2,000 judges to run the elections, and it's not uncommon for uh, memory sticks to be left in the machine um, overnight, and they close up and forget them. Uh, first thing in the morning, we send out and get them, and that's no more what we did on Wednesday morning. And, uh, you know, I keep hearing uh, the Dixon campaign talk about they're still looking for eight outstanding precincts. On Wednesday, they received a copy of those uh, numbers added on to the existing numbers. So I don't, I don't know what's still missing. So those those cards are actually kept locked away somewhere. It's not like they're someone leaves them in their car. Is what you're saying? Well, they are locked in the, in the uh, voting unit, mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, the machines do have seals on them and tamper tape. And if they are tampered with, we still have the uh, ballots themselves that we can rerun. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, some things about mix-ups in districts. Did you hear anything about that? Or where people went and they said, this is in your district? Or was that a systemic problem or anything you heard about that? Well, you know, I know we had uh, one uh, precinct. Uh, we had a lot of uh, senior citizen buildings that had been taken over by private entities. And their polling places were moved. Um, and I know at the Waxter Center, I understand people were going there and thought that was the 12th Ward, and it was not. So did that, did those, were those people able to vote, or what happened? Well, you know, they were instructed to go to the proper location and vote. You know, everyone receives a new voter's card when their polling place is moved. Everybody receives a specimen ballot several weeks before the election. Um, and in a lot of cases, people don't look at their mail when we had, uh, notify them of any change. Last question. Um, we um, did notice in the district we were in, led 111 West Cold Spring, that they did run out of provisional ballots. Was that a citywide problem? At which location? 1111. Um, leave uh, for people with disabilities. Did run out of provisional ballots. We were told that by the election person. Was that a citywide problem? Is, did they make any, was there anything they could do for that? Or was that well, is that, was that election day? Was it doing early voting? It was election day. Yeah. yeah. Well, of course, it's not uncommon. And of course, uh, if they monitor the ballots during the day as chief judge, uh, before that happens, they have a help desk number. We have people that uh, run to uh, locations all day long for whatever the reason is to bring ballots, provisional ballots. We, are out, we allocate X amount per precinct mm -hmm. uh, based upon the percentage that the uh, state says will possibly vote. Okay. Um, so now you have how many provisional ballots and, and other ballots you have left to count? Well, I was just getting some numbers a few minutes ago, and um, um, I'm estimating probably that we may have uh, outstanding, I know maybe provisional, maybe close to um, seven, maybe 7,000, a little shy of 7,000, mm -hmm. and then uh, left of absentees, probably close to uh, maybe, uh, maybe 2,000 because remember now 4,000 almost have been counted on absentee so, one. Um, the letter that supposedly went out to felons um, saying they couldn't vote, that came from the election board? We had approximately 34 individuals that received um, a letter um, that indicated um, that they were felons. Now, of course, this happened during the transition of the March 10th deadline. Uh, date uh, when the uh, General Assembly enacted and the governor signed the, uh, uh, the bill. Right. So um, those persons were notified, uh, talked to by the st uh, state board, um, and uh, had an understanding with them that they uh, were eligible to vote. Uh, and they received a letter, and uh, in the end, they were eligible to vote. Okay. Well, that's good. Do you know why that letter went out? Do you have any idea what, what happened? Well, because it's a, it's a letter that was generated automatically by the system. And, of course, uh, we had been planning for the uh, override of the bill. And, of course, when it happened, um, I 
guess uh, the system had not been pulled down, but we had a new letter, but it was not in the system. Mm -hmm. It was a letter that we needed to do manually.